Over tourism or balanced development, Bali Airport plan sparks debate. Yes, more on what's happening with the Bali Airport. Proposal to revive the national exam draws mixed reactions, including from me. Stay tuned for details on these and other stories. Sama Pagi, welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is November 10th, 2024, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like here today up in Singaraja in Kampung Bugis? It is hot again, 30.1 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is way up there at 75%. Wind speed is way down at 1.4 kilometers per hour. There is almost no wind. And it did rain yesterday up here in Kampung Bugis, not a lot, but wow, there was a lot of lightning and thunder off in the distance. But we got uh, some very, very light showers, and that was about it. So, still pretty dry up here. And, as usual, a lot of stuff. And I think I may be doing a video today. We have a birthday party for one of my grandsons, and all of my children are here, and all of my grandchildren, and a nephew, and, well, son-in-laws, daughter-in-law, just the house is packed. Uh, so we'll see about that. But in the meantime, let's get into this question about over-tourism and how it relates to the North Bali Airport. Over-tourism or balanced development? Bali Airport plan sparks debate. Government initiatives to expand infrastructure will cement Bali's status as Indonesia's premier tourist destination rather than spread out development across the country, to the extent that many now worry about over-tourism on the island. In a visit to Denpasar on this past Sunday, President Prabowo Subianto vowed to continue the development of a new airport in the island's north, claiming it would help turn the province into a new Singapore or new Hong Kong. And I discussed that issue before. The head of the Bali Tourism Office, Pak Pumayun, has thrown his support behind the plan, though he noted it would need to be reviewed further. He argued that the new airport in Bulalang Regency would help spread tourism more evenly across the island, alleviating overcrowding and traffic congestion in the southern region. The central government's decision to build the new airport must have undergone a preliminary assessment, he said on this past Wednesday, adding that safety had to be the priority in the airport's development with advanced technology to ensure there were no risk for local sites. Pakpamayun said the new airport would have an economic multiplier effect and increase Bali's accessibility, which would contribute to the island's growing tourism industry. Question is, do we need that? The plan for the new Bali airport, however, has sparked debate both in the political elite and among local people. The project was proposed in 2016. Projects have been proposed for North Bali Airport way back before the turn of the century. The project was proposed in 2016, but was cut from the National Strategic Projects list in 2022 by President, former President Jokowi. President Jokowi, or former President Jokowi, canceled this due to a lack of political support. Former President and Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle, PDIP, Chair Megawati Sukarno Putri, has expressed her opposition to the project, arguing that the airport's development would put local people at risk of being marginalized and would only benefit tourism investors. Asked about the project on this past Tuesday, Coordinating Infrastructure and Regional Development Minister Agus Yudoyono told the Post that the plan required further study and central local government coordination. The idea of turning North Bali into a new Singapore or new Hong Kong did not sit well with all locals. Yeah, definitely. Nilu Jelantic, you know who Nilu Jelantic is, who represents Bali in the Regional Representative Council DPD, made her objections known on Instagram in a post, quoting local Lontar manuscript ec expert Sugi Lanus's opinion on President Prabowo's comments. Balinese people regarding the rise of tourism have a saying, tourism for Bali, not Bali for tourism. This needs to be taken seriously, Sugi wrote as quoted by Nilu on her Instagram account. His response consisted of nine points which Nilu called on lawmakers and stakeholders to consider. Sugi said imitating Singapore or Hong Kong's modern infrastructure and artificial tourism was not suitable for Bali. 
since the 1970s, he wrote, Bali had oriented its tourism towards cultural tourism, which is still referred to all the time, although if we look at the beach clubs and all the things that are being developed here, I don't know how that fits into what's called cultural tourism. He said the main attraction of Bali lay in its rich cultural heritage and natural beauty. Central and local government policy should avoid being too hasty in making claims and instead should synergize to ensure that developments in Bali focus not only on physical infrastructure but also on understanding its ethical and philosophical foundations, he said. Bali gubernatorial candidate Made Muliawan Arya defended Prabowo's speech saying the initiative was aimed at developing the airport and its surroundings to standards similar to Singapore's or Hong Kong's, and I've discussed this as well before, not to reshape the island of Bali into those cities. He urged people to watch Prabowo's full speech. In the beginning of the speech, he said, President Prabowo told us to eradicate corruption, free the island from waste problems, and preserve Balinese culture, as well as building the new airport. The new airport is one of several projects aimed at maximizing Bali's tourism potential. The government is also pursuing other developments such as family offices and social special economic zones, SEZs, in Sanur to attract more tourism investment. Agung Wardana, an academic researcher and environmental law professor at Gajamada University, said sustainable tourism had to respect ecological limits and that ongoing issues on the island, such as heavy traffic, flooding, and mounting waste, showed that Bali had exceeded its tourism capacity. I don't know why it's academics who keep saying this and politicians saying the ex exact opposite. Bali right now is under massive pressure and it will not be sustainable to keep expanding its tourism sector. He also noted that the central government still perceived Bali as a primary option for increasing foreign exchange in the country, such as through programs encouraging digital nomads to live and work on the island. The plan to boost local economy by getting foreigners to stay and work remotely on the island, he argued, had proven counterproductive. In many cases, digital nomads have no significant contribution. They live in Bali with minimal local economic impact, Agung said. He added that they spent little and that some had even taken up work as property agents. <laughs> we know that's true. Again, this question of is Bali over-touristed? And what about the airport? We need the airport in order to bring in more people. But do we need to more, have more people here? We've already got, what, four and a half million, and the carrying capacity of the island a few years ago was quoted as being around 2.5 million, two to 2.5 million, so we're almost double at this point. And you throw in the tourists, and yeah, it's crowded. And if you take a look at the traffic down in the south, it is a mess. So some people have said Bali is a cash cow for the national government and that projects being developed here are done without actually taking into account what is happening to people that live on the island. And there are a number of different proposals going on related to this, and we'll continue to talk about those. Okay, let's go on to education. Proposal to revive the national exam draws mixed reactions. The newly established elementary and secondary education ministry is mulling over a plan to revive the national examination in a bid to boost students' motivation to learn. After various reports indicating the decline in the country's academic performance in the years following the abolition of the exam in 2021 due to the pandemic. Minister Abdul Muti said that his ministry was conducting research to determine whether it should bring back the national exam. It is also reviewing other policies by former education minister Nadia Makarim, including his flagship Merdeka Balajar Freedom to Learn program aimed at developing more flexible and effective methods for the national education system. Following his appointment as Education, Culture, Research and Technology Minister in 2019, Pak Nadiem, the co-founder of the tech giant Gojek and a Harvard Business School graduate, rolled out numerous policies that have taken many by surprise, or that took many by surprise, including replacing the national exam with the national assessment. The national exam requires students nationwide to take standardized tests in math, English, Indonesian, and other subjects, despite tangible learning disparities across the vast archipelago. Meanwhile, under the national assessment, only a handful of students, 
from each school are required to take standardized tests, which now focus on students' literacy and numerical competence. Although many consider this policy innovative and revolutionary, critics have questioned its effectiveness in improving students' academic competence. Indonesia's scores in the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, which measures the abilities of students aged 15 years old in reading, math, and science literacy, have declined across all categories following the eradication of the national exam. In the 2022 PISA ranking, Indonesia scored 355 in reading, 359 in math, and 376 in science to place in the lower half of the global rankings. Its scores marked a drop of between 10 to 20 points in each category from the 2018 survey when it scored respectively 371, 379, and 396. That's in reading math and science. The former minister's office blamed the decline on the learning loss relating from the COVID-19 pandemic. And if you know anything about how the online learning was going during the pandemic, well, my experience was it was terrible and kids lost a lot during that time. So you would expect the scores to drop. And you see that same thing in a lot of countries around the world. The question is how and if students can catch up for that lost time. In September, this past September, former Vice President Yusuf Kala criticized Nadim's decision to remove the national exam, arguing that it was important to motivate the students to learn. Do national exams motivate students to learn or memorize? Calls to revive the decades-old practice have also been growing online, with netizens saying that Indonesia's education quality and students' academic achievement have been dwindling since the government scraped the test. Lawmaker Bonnie Triana from the House of Representatives Commission, ex overseeing education, science, and technology, has recently urged the government to bring back the nationwide exams. She believes that the test would ensure that students' academic achievements across the country meet a certain standard. However, she said, we also need to improve the educational infrastructures and teacher competence in all regions so that there will not be a huge learning disparity among students when they take the exam. Despite growing public demand to revive the exam, several teachers' unions have quickly rejected the proposal. Association for Education and Teachers, P2G coordinator, Pak Salim, said that the nation, national exam could not accurately assess, assess student academic competence since it only measures specific subjects and completely ignores student achievement in other areas. If authorities plan to make passing the test necessary for pursuing higher academic study like they did in the past, it will only benefit students from higher economic backgrounds who have the resources to pay for private tutors and study courses. He added that relying on the national exam to determine whether students can continue towards higher ed level education would also encourage teachers to implement teaching to the test strategy, yes, where the curriculum is heavily focused on preparing students for a standardized test instead of encouraging them to learn. We don't think it's fair to assess years of learning with a single test, especially considering the vast disparity of education infrastructures and teacher competence across the archipelago. The Federation of Indonesia Teachers Association, FSGI, Secretary General Pernomo said that in the past, the immense pressure of taking the national exam had caused many students to suffer from severe stress. Many students also cheated because they were desperate to pass the test. Education expert Pak Angi of the National Research and Innovation Agency, BRIN, said that reviving the national exam would only bring back old problems related to learning disparities and cheating during the test. I personally tend to disagree that we need to bring back the exam. Instead of focusing on how to evaluate students, we need to focus on how we can improve the way we teach students literacy, numerical competence, math and science, and how to improve teachers' competence and welfare. He also urged the government to carry out thorough research before deciding whether or not to bring back the exam, including considering the advice of academics. And more on some education, some good news on education for once. Awesome! Dozens of elderly in Pagayaman Village, Bulaleng, back to school. Here's their story. Dozens of elderly people in Pagayaman Village, 
Tsukasada District in Buleng Regency were seen sitting as if they were studying at school in the past in the village head's office. It turns out that they were attending the launch of the elderly school, which was held this past Thursday, a few days ago. From Jawa Post Radar Bali's monitoring at the location, the elderly, both grandfathers and grandmothers, appeared to be sitting quietly while listening to a number of presentations delivered by related officials. The elderly school at Bina Kelawarga Lancia Mandiri in Pagayaman is known to be the first in Bulaleng. Good for them. The mention aims to realize our elderly who are smart or healthy, independent, active, productive, and dignified in addition to making the elderly resilient. Pagayaman village head, Pak Ali, revealed that in his area, the elderly do participate in a number of village programs, such as gymnastics, which are held once a week. However, now with the existence of senior schools, of course, they hope that the seniors can understand the progress of the times, which indirectly means they can follow existing developments. With the many programs for the elderly, at least it makes them feel like they have a sense of belonging, of independence in life. And as a senior, an elderly person, I can relate to that. The senior school in Pagayaman has 40 students, all of whom are seniors, living in the area with a minimum age of 60. For the place of study, Pak Ali admitted that he had not yet confirmed a special place for the time being there doing the studying in the village head office so that it's easy to monitor by the village and so the program runs smoothly. He said maybe at my house, at the house's prayer room too, the principle is that it's important to be safe. But for now, we're going to design it to be right here. Meanwhile, acting head of Bali Province National Population and Family Planning Agency Representative Office, Dr. Nilu Gede said that her party initiated the existence of an elderly school. However, there are not many areas that have this. One of them that has, of course, is Pagayaman, first one here in Bulaleng. She said the target of this elderly school is to optimize activities for the elderly, also to provide counseling information to them so the elderly can continue to be productive even though they're only at home. She said that the reason for the establishment of the elderly school was the increase in the elderly population. Indonesia also has a great population here. Of course, this must also be utilized so that the elderly do not seem like a burden. Moreover, there are many complaints from the elderly who feel like they are lonely in the midst of a crowd. In fact, they also need friends to talk to or to complain to as well as friends to work with. So, with the existence of the elderly school, we facilitate them to become enthusiastic again because they meet friends of the same age. The elderly school is categorized as an informal school. Later, the elderly who become students will follow a learning program whose curriculum is based on seven dimensions of resilience elderly, namely the physical dimension to the environment. However, the curriculum will be adjusted to the needs of the students. The students are even given the choice to follow this program for six months or 12 months. Each meeting lasts for two hours. Later, there will be a graduation and there'll be a certificate. The graduates are from S1 to S3, which means standard one to standard three. So it's an award that they've gone through the process at the elderly school. On the other hand, the head of population control, family planning, women's empowerment, and <laughs> child protective service, wow, these long titles, of Bulang Regency in Yeoman Riang Pustaka, explained that the existence of this elderly school is a form of appreciation and attention to the elderly. Yes, good. However, she understands that every village and sub-district in Bulang has not been able to realize this, considering that there must be a budget for this. Let's find some money for the elderly. Some villages become Kanets, Banjar, Banjarasam, Panji, Tembok. Hopefully, all villages can join this, she said. Wow, I like this. Programs for the elderly, you know, you have these in your Korea, you have them in Japan, where there's a lot of stuff for the elderly to do so that they can feel like they're contributing to society, that they're involved in society. They're not just sitting at home watching TV or just kind of hanging around doing nothing. So. Programs for the elderly, wow, I'm all in favor of this. Okay, that is it for today. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Take care, and I will see you tomorrow with some video. Not sure which one. <laughs>